Welcome to Project Puma. My name is Lou Tranche, and in this project, we're actually going to be taking a car and converting it to electric. Now, I know nothing. I know nothing. Nothing. And I mean nothing about converting a car to electric, but let's do it together. Now, most of you are going to assume that this fine specimen right here is actually a Volkswagen Beetle chassis, and you'd be mostly correct. <laughs> it's just a little kind of cousin off the Beetle side. It's actually a Brasilia, as equipped in a Puma. Puma? Puma. There's lots of history on the Puma. You can spend hours researching it. But one interesting fact is that this Brazilian company was briefly owned by none other than Muhammad Ali in the late 80s. How crazy is that? But let's dive right in. Why a Puma? It's pretty simple. Simplicity. The whole idea of using a Volkswagen Beetle uh, chassis, a uh, drivetrain to manufacture an EV conversion has been done over and over again. And a Puma was just something a bit different. They haven't gone up in value desperately when you compare them to something like an old bus. Holy! I did not see that coming! There's lots of them around. They're fiberglass, so they're nice and light as well. It's actually a pretty decent looking car. Heck, look at these Resto Mods. Now, I, albeit they're pretty darn extreme Resto Mods but they're not bad looking. There's something there that we can work with. But before we start working with it, let's do a little bit of a history lesson because I started this whole project in 2018. It's 2022 right now. And because of the pandemic, I had to back burner it. I mean, I just had to stay in business. So there was things that were just a little bit more important than, than converting an EV car. So this footage for the next few minutes is gonna be four years old. During the quest for a donor car, I came across this fella. And while conversing with him, I realized he had become ill. Too ill to ever finish this project car. He was a retired mechanic, and we got to know each other a little bit. I could go on for another 15 or 20 on this subject specifically, but all you need to know is this. I bought these cars off him to help him out, even though they needed a lot more work than I was looking for. purchased the kit, the two cars, I got this good body and I got a car that was for parts. And I thought somehow I might be able to salvage two cars out of it, but this one is just too far gone. And we're disassembling it for parts now. But what I find very interesting is I was looking at this front end and Terry had pointed out that, hey, it's got some uh, adjusters built into it so as for us to uh, be able to lower and raise the front end. But instead of there being bolts here, the previous owner, whoever did this repair, actually welded in the front end. So even though that this front end looks like it's been replaced at some point, it's no good to us because it's been welded in. I think you guys enjoyed demoing stuff just a bit too much. For those of you who haven't met this fellow before, his name is Terry and he's our shop foreman. I gave him the car and a GoPro camera and I told him to go at it. Now I thought we should have just sent this chassis out to have it sandblasted, but he had different ideas. And I didn't want to tell him what to do, you know, he's an experienced technician. The only thing I said was get her done. Now he took lots of footage early on in the build, but as things dragged on, he kind of forgot about that. And, and I don't have a lot of footage of him welding the four pans in. But you get the idea, right? I mean, if you want to watch a video about how to restore a Volkswagen chassis, I'm sure there's lots of detailed videos on the subject.
Okay, first line you see there to my left is the first cut line. Second line is your no return line. If you miss this line, game's over. So we're not going to miss that line. Is so we're, we're not going to miss that line. That's good. That's good to hear. Project Puma right here actually needs a set of 14 inch tires just so we can move it around the shop. And I'm like, well, I'm never going to use the 14 inch tires that are on the Ferrari because A, they're just too old. So we've taken the tires off the Ferrari and we've put them on the Puma so that we can roll Project Puma around. Let's drag this over here out of the way, please. I said before. Can you tell by the resemblance that this is my cousin Joseph? The camera. I was like, what's he doing? Now this just is a standard Volkswagen front end, but you can see we've replaced all the tie rods. We've also added these uh, lowering kits here that work on the springs. The springs are actually inside the these torque tubes, and by adjusting those little levers right there, we can change the amount of pressure that's sitting on them. As well, over there, um, that's the spindle. Uh, we've actually bought lowering spindles on it, so we should be dropping the car a good couple inches. This is the non-independent suspension, uh, which is kind of the old school one. Wanted to update it, but oh, it was just so much effort. Um, that little uh, trailing arm there is actually where we adjust the ride height. It's pretty easy to drop the vehicle in the rear. I decided upon a Nissan Leaf as my donor. No, no, not a Tesla. They're just too damn expensive. After striking out several times trying to purchase a complete car at a discounted rate, I eventually gave up and just decided to do this piecemeal. Join me in welcoming this EM57 Nissan Leaf power plant. Here we have the Leaf motor sitting very vicariously on a jack, but to give you an idea where it's gonna sit, why are we attaching the motor to that transmission? Well, once again, simplicity is the key. If we were to turn this motor you know, to a um, transverse arrangement and use the stock transmission, which was an option, it would have meant cutting all of this infrastructure, all of this uh, out and redesigning the whole rear end of the car. And I'm really trying to avoid that kind of work. So the idea is to take that leaf motor there and oh, focus and bolt it to create an adapter plate and bolt it to that type 4 transmission right there and also use the clutch. I do enjoy autocrossing and I would like to autocross this every once in a while. So that means I would like a clutch. And I understand that there are a lot of people that don't use clutches in EVs, and that's great. But for me, I'm gonna try and make this a clutched operational 
vehicle. Phase one, which was to refurbish the chassis, is now complete. On to phase two. Design an adapter to mate the leaf to the Volkswagen. I cruised all the forums looking for somebody who had done this already. I found several diagrams, but just couldn't make them work. Instead of burning through more hours, I just decided to do it myself. Well, at least I'm gonna try. And I should also mention that I have found some universal adapters, but they all are designed for a direct coupling without a clutch. My adapter needs to house a bearing that will support the clutch and flywheel. I'm going to copy the bolt pattern onto this piece of paper, then I'm going to scan it and bring it into Fusion 360 and try to recreate a 2D replica of the back of the motor. For those of you who don't know what Fusion 360 is, it's actually a CAD program and there's a free version of it for us amateurs. Once I have this scanned, I import it to the program and then I trace it and I get it correct to scale. Next up is to convert the file and then generate a toolpath. Run a simulation and then head downstairs to the actual table. Well, I guess we're about to see how close or how far I was. Surprisingly pretty close for my first try. But not perfect. I'm going to measure, adjust my file, and recut it again, this time on a little thicker metal. The stuff I used initially was just too kind of wobbly. Alright, so let's try version 2. So we're looking pretty good here. This is just the flywheel and clutch assembly just sitting on here. It doesn't mate properly. Just looking for clearance issues up here. Now I'm going to be tight here, um, but I can definitely remove a good half an inch of this ring gear since I don't need a starter motor anymore. So we can definitely thin that down. The uh, uh, So far so good. Hmm. Once again, I was hoping that I could save myself some work and download somebody else's hard work, but this diagram I downloaded of the bolt pattern, it just doesn't seem to be right. All right, so I think that brings me out to the end of part number one. This adapter plate is gonna require quite a few hours of me uh, MacGyvering stuff and figuring it out. It's definitely at the limit of my skill set when it comes to uh, Fusion 6, 360 and CAD programming. Uh, dedicating uh, any more time to this part of the process is just going to be long and uh, not so eventful. So I'm going to save the adapter build for part number two. And if you want to see more of Project Puma, well, you know what you got to do? You can hit that subscribe button. Yeah subscribe and that makes everything better because it sends a signal to YouTube it sends a signal to me that you want to see more anyways thanks and we'll catch you real soon <laughs>